Now, I said before that configurations are a special kind of PowerShell script. Again, you don't have to write any PowerShell to produce the MOF if you have another tool capable of producing the correct MOF file. But PowerShell is a good way to jump in and start producing MOFs without having to go get other tools, and a configuration script is the way to do that. It's a special kind of script that doesn't actually have to contain any programming. It's, I guess you could kind of think of it as a very, very special INI file, and it just describes the configuration you want. You reference resources, so the IP address resource, the DNS server resource, uh, a local user resource, all, all the different resources that you need, and you specify their settings. So you tell each resource what you want. Some resources might be referenced more than once. For example, if part of your configuration needs to make sure that a particular process is running, you might have multiple instances of that resource with each one specifying an individual process. You then run that configuration on your authoring computer to produce the MOF file. Now, the MOF is always a static text file. There's no logic, there's no programming, there's no decision making. Any decisions about what's going to be configured is made in the configuration and it's evaluated when you run the configuration. The MOF is just a, a you could literally open it in Notepad. It is that plain of a text file. The MOF is what gets deployed to your target nodes, either via push or to a pull server. Now this is a very basic DSC configuration. You can see that it is written in the form of a PowerShell script. It starts with the keyword configuration, and then I provide a name for that configuration. This works a lot like a Windows PowerShell function in that at the end of my script, I'm going to run the configuration, and that's what will actually produce them off. Now, inside of the configuration, I can have one or more nodes. These configurations can also be parameterized, and that would allow me to specify the node when I ran the configuration, as opposed to having a, a server name like member2 hard-coded. Inside this node, I can have one or more configuration settings, or configuration items. This is the first item. It uses the Windows feature DSC resource. I've named it backup, but I could have named it whatever I wanted to. Each of these configuration items, depending on the resource you use, will accept one or more settings. This one has two settings. Ensure is what I use to say, I want this particular Windows feature installed, and name is the name of the Windows feature that I want installed. So these are designed to be as flexible as you need them to be. I've tried to keep this one very, very, very simple just so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run this, but before I do it, I need to make sure that I know where the ISE is actually focused. I'm going to put this in the C directory because it's going to save the MOFs in a folder called Windows Backup because that's the name of my configuration, and it's going to create that folder in the current directory. I really didn't want that under Windows System 32. Now I can run this. And you'll see that it created a folder called Windows Backup, and in there, oops, spell it correctly. In there, there is a file called member2.moth. Let's just have a look at him. Just a text file, no code in here at all. And eh, it's kind of a fancy text file, but all it is is a text file. You can see that it's defining a Windows feature called backup, so forth and so on. Now, where did I get that information? Well, if you run get DSC resource, one of the DSC resources that will eventually come up at the end of this list is called Windows, ba Windows feature. And then you can dig a little deeper to find out what its settings are, like ensure, name, and so on. There it is, right there, third from the bottom, Windows feature. And now I can see that it takes name. Oh, look, it accepts a credential. Uh, it has the ensure right there. So there's several other things it can do. Well, anyway, now I've actually created a MOF that could be distributed via pull, via push, whatever I wanted to do. DSC only lets you send one MOF to a given computer. So in a lot of environments, you're going to have certain configuration items that are common across multiple computers, and you can use something called 
a composite configuration to kind of modularize things and make it a little bit easier to maintain the configuration. So a composite configuration is a normal PowerShell configuration script and you save it in a special way that lets it be referenced from other configurations. So that gives you the ability to create little modular configuration chunks. So you might have one chunk that's all your standard security settings and another chunk that applies to all of your web servers. And those can all be combined into a composite configuration that applies to a particular server. For example, up here at the top left, I've created a composite configuration for domain controllers. Now that's directly referencing a few DSC resources on the bottom of your screen, but it's also grabbing two configurations that were designed to, to kind of be little modular configuration chunks. The first one is just some standard intranet security settings, and the second one are some common server configuration items in our environment. So the top level one here, config A, is the composite configuration. Now, on the other side of the screen, we've got config B, which is another composite configuration intended to apply to web servers. This one is also grabbing that common server configuration, but instead of the intranet security module, it's grabbing another one that's designed for public facing servers. So you can kind of modularize these things out. And that lets you, you break the config up into little chunks. Keep in mind, when you run the config, all of these are merged together into a single static moth file. If you later go back and decide to change one of these, you have to rerun the config, produce a new moth, and push that moth out to the target nodes. It's the moth that does the configuration, but the moth can't have any logic or programming, no decision making, no modularization, nothing else. All that happens in the configuration scripts. And of course, all of these configs are referencing DFC resources to actually do their work.